All right, this is Defusky Island 101 for new visitors. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Jennifer Collins. I'm a science teacher that loves nature, and my family travels to Defusky. And so I know the stress of planning a trip to an island that can only be reached by a boat, especially with kids. So I'm hoping this slideshow kind of provides you some insight and helps make your travel planning a little easier. Um, we go a few times a year just to relax, but also for the nature. And so I create short video clips uh, providing virtual field trips of the island for a lot of my students who may never get to go to the beach or just experience to Fusky. In addition to teaching for the school system, I also provide nature-based homeschool classes. So if you're in need of homeschool, just let me know. All right, thanks so much. Here we go. So Dufusky Island is located between Hilton Head Island and Savannah. It's about five miles long and 2.5 miles wide. So think about an island with a surface area of eight square miles. It's estimated to be around 5,000 acres. So you can see in the red here, you can get to it from Hilton Head, from Tybee or Savannah. So the name comes from the Muskogee language for sharp feather because of its shape. And many of the artifacts that are in the museum on the island can tell you a little bit more about the island's history. It is accessible only by ferry or barge. And there's around 400 people that live there full time. But the island is full of just cultural experiences and a resort area and environmental preserves and different types of artists are there. So it's, it's a really great place to visit. So you can come over for a few hours to ride around in a golf cart, maybe go on a tour or come over on a boat for dinner or stay at one of the rental cottages on the island like we do. And this is Melrose Beach and uh, we love this area a lot of these cottages are all facing the beach it's just a real quiet the beaches are never crowded so here's some really important things to remember when visiting plan ahead definitely plan your boat ride um, we usually plan our boat ride with a water taxi about three to four months in advance you'll need to plan your meals you'll need to rent a golf cart Plan to relax. So Tefusky is definitely a magical place away from the crowd. So it has a really relaxed atmosphere. Don't go expecting tourist type accommodations. There's no large pools. There's no restaurant chains. There's no large grocery chain. That is the whole relaxed atmosphere of the island. You'll definitely need a golf cart to get around and you're going to be traveling around on dirt roads. So since it's only reachable by boat, you can use the Defusky Ferry, and this is the public ferry, and a lot of the residents use it too, or you can charter a private or semi-private water taxi, and that's what I recommend for guests. You can use May River, if you're coming from the Bluffton area, Bull River from Savannah, and then you've got various captains, and I'm sure I'm not covering all of them. You'll just need to Google different um, water taxis in the area. But we used Bull River and we've used them a few times now. And we've been very happy. So this is from the Public Ferry um, Baggage Info website. So there's the link and once you're there, you can go to travel tips, but then you can click baggage info for this. And so you can see the first piece of baggage is complimentary and you're not gonna need to pay, but then after that, there's additional costs. Now you can pay for one of the bins if you're bringing over a large amount of things. But again, um, this is just the public ferry. So what we've discovered is that if you rent a semi-private, which maybe means there's one or two other families on the boat or a private water taxi, that you don't have to worry about how many pieces of luggage you have or how many coolers or bikes and things like that. And so 
what we started doing is just using Bull River and they allow, they do a chartered private water taxi. So this last time that we came over, which was April, 2022, we had a party at 10 and um, my mother is in a wheelchair and she's immune compromised. So because of COVID reasons, we didn't want to be on a semi-private boat for her. And so we decided to come over on a private charter. And so we had around 15 bags of luggage, two Tupperware containers of groceries, two bikes and the wheelchair. And you pretty much pull up to the dock and they help you unload everything. So it just kind of took the stress away knowing that we weren't limited on how many items we could bring. Now, for accommodations, the island has a variety of home rentals. Um, you've got the Airbnb, VRBO, the Defusky Facebook page also has rentals. Tent camping and RV sites are not available. So groceries, this seems to be the biggest question about going to the island. If you're visiting the island, it's best to pack what you need. All right, so Tavuski has only a few options because there's no large food chains on the island and the hours are unpredictable and you're gonna have weather closings and seasonal hours. Some of the restaurants are just pop up for certain events. You can get a private chef or have food catered at your home, but again, you'll need to book that way in advance too. But again, it's best to pack what you need. And then the rest can just be a surprise. If you're riding around in your golf cart and you see a food truck with ice cream, that's great. But that way you're not expecting it. This is the general store at Freeport. And um, it's at the Cooper River Landing area. And this is also where you're going to get gas for your golf cart. So you could just see the four pitchers. This is the amount of groceries. Yes, they see they have about four gallons of milk and uh, um, some eggs and a, a few things of bread. But again, um, if you definitely need it, you would need to just bring it over when you come. But they do have backups. And I love over here on the far right, they've got a few things of aloe vera and conditioner in case you forgot something. Um, this is a new store, Defusky Store Eatery and Bar, and they have sandwiches and pizza. They sell t-shirts, have beer and wine. So it's just a really, it's a small grocery store. They do have limited hours, so you'll need to check with them, but it is, it's just nice to have other options. So if you're using Bull River and you're coming from the Savannah, Wilmington area, there's a Kroger about two miles away. You can stop there to load up your cooler and you can also uh, stop at the Publix if you prefer that. There is a grocery delivery service that will bring groceries to you on the island by boat. Here's another one, the Cyber Valley service. They do the same. You also have the option of local caterers and I'm sure I don't have everyone um, that's available, but here's a few. There is a very high demand for catered meals, so these should definitely be scheduled weeks, maybe even months in advance. Here's some new food options. You've got uh, Fry's Corner and the Farmer's Market. It was open most Saturdays. The Burger Boat comes some Fridays to the county dock around lunch, but again, it will depend on the weather. We've been there before and it was too windy and they were not able to dock. So again, I told you I'd give you some examples that helped us. So here was our example of our grocery list. So we've got, um, you know, hot dogs, hamburger meat. And what I did was I got three pounds of hamburger meat and I'll tell you why in a minute. But we've got our bread, peanut butter and jelly, just easy things to make for a family. Box chips and, and um, snacks are really help. If you're getting off of the boat, it's nice to have that little handle or be able to have one of the kids carry one of the boxes. It just keeps everything from getting crushed. We did go over with eggs each time. We usually get the organic eggs because it has the plastic that kind of keeps everything safe and it doesn't bust. 
So during our time together in the mornings, we usually had like canned biscuits, jelly, eggs and bacon, grits, oatmeal, things like that. And then for lunch, we had peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, tuna sandwiches, uh, maybe hot dogs. So the first night um, I cooked hamburgers. So remember I had that three pounds of hamburger meat. Um, we cooked that for hamburgers. And then later in the week, we were able to use that same cooked hamburger meat and break it up and use it in spaghetti. And then we made nachos. So if you can find some items that you can use several ways, that is really beneficial. Most water taxis allow you to bring a 50 quart or a lower size cooler. We filled our cooler full of frozen food and things that needed to be kept cold, but we didn't add ice. The boat ride's not going to take you very long coming over, so that way you can just pack as much as you can in your cooler and not worry about everything, um, you know, defrosting and things like that. We did get these large Ziploc bags ahead of time, and we put our meat in it. Now, if you have frozen items like uh, garlic bread, throw away the cardboard boxes and just place the bread, of course, in the plastic in your cooler just to save space. We had a food suitcase. <laughs> I know people think this is crazy, but um, you see the oversized suitcase on the right. We used it to carry all of our beach towels. Now, beach toys, all those kind of things, and you don't, and chairs, you do not have to worry about that. Most rentals have those items. People have brought them over and then they don't want to go back with them on the ferry or whatever. And so every time we've been, usually on the back porch is beach toys and chairs. So I would not worry about that. But we did bring beach towels. And so what we did was when we got to the grocery store, we had the trunk open and we had our food suitcase and we had our cooler. And so in the we filled the cooler up with everything that was frozen or needed to be cold. And then we put um, the items like hamburger buns and hot dog buns and sandwich bread. We wrapped the towels around it and put it in the food suitcase. And everything worked out great. My husband loves a specific type of bottled water. <laughs> so he brought a whole suitcase full of bottled water. But the water is filtered on the island and it's safe to drink. So you don't have to do that, but you just, just an idea. So again, we use Bull River. You need to get there about 20 minutes beforehand. Somebody needs to walk down the dock and pay at the marina office. Usually you have to usually pay ahead, but you just need to sign. And then they're going to come to your car with these wagons you see on the left and they're gonna help you load everything. We did tip them, but it's so nice to just be able to pull up and they unload it all. And then they give you a ticket you put on your dash so you can park your car and you're good to go. So boat ride, there's my daughter. She's super happy about getting on the boat. It takes about 25 minutes. It's usually an enclosed top boat. If you're doing the uh, private water taxi, um, I'd bring a long sleeve shirt. It gets a little bit cold if you have little kids. Uh, they might want a jacket. It's not really choppy or anything like that. And as you drive out, you can see the cargo ships and the fort to the left. So it's, it's a nice, easy ride. When you get there, your dock's going to look like this. And so we went to County Dock. Uh, that's a, a popular water taxi dock. And you can see it'd be real easy for my mom to get up on the wheelchair. And um, they will help you unload everything. And so that helps too. So you've got several rentals on the island. The island's going to be separated into three areas. You've got Bloody Point, which is a condo style, three-story building that does have a pool. You've got Hag Point. That's a private country club resort for members only. It's gated. Um, you have Melrose, um, where the beach cottages are. And at this time, pool access is not available. So here's just a picture. So you can kind of get a look. And you see how close it is to Hilton Head. And you can sometimes see the fireworks from Harbor Town. So once you get on the island, you're going to need transportation, of course, to, to your rental. Now, some of them include transportation, but we had to contact Dufusky Transit. And they, of course, visit their website, um, but it made me feel better. I texted them the day that I was in Savannah and just said, hey, we're fixing to leave at one o'clock. So they knew what time to pick us up. And every time they've been there when we arrive. 
The cost is around $20 or $25 a person for a round trip pickup. You'll need to check that price and make sure it's still correct. But they're going to arrive with a 12 person van and a trailer attached, and they're going to help you load everything at the dock and unload it at the cottage. You're going to need a golf cart. So um, some of the rental cottages provide one, but if you, we had a large family go, so we needed to rent additional ones. So we rented from Paul Wolf. Um, there's a few companies, but there's his number. Just wanted to give a shout out to him because he was super easy to rent from. It was great. I was worried about running out of gas because we pretty much drove around all day. So don't worry on day four for us. We went to the general store to fill it up and we still had three fourths of a tank full. But remember, you will need to fill it up um, before the end of your vacation. And there's electric golf cart choices, too. So let's talk about Melrose. We chose Melrose because of the easy getting to the beach. So it has pretty much two rows of cottages. That first row is beachfront and the other is just right behind it um, where you're going to see the old golf course area. But most of the cottages have views of the beach. And so on the left, this is the little entrance way. And as you'll notice, this is a little bit grown up with vines and things like that. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So it's super unique. You're going to go down Avenue with the Oaks. You're going to have large oak trees with Spanish moss hanging down. You're going to pass the Equestrian Center. And then you're going to pass a large hotel that is abandoned. And you're going to notice that a few of the beach cottages are boarded up. And we'll talk about in a second the Melrose Resort itself. But don't get discouraged as when I remember my very first time, I thought, oh my, what have I got into? Why are these all boarded up? But as you pass on, you're going to see around 20 beach cottages that are just beautiful. And that's where the locals live. And those are also used for rentals. Here is the, the beaches over here to the far right. But this middle little trail is where the horses go through in the morning. And these are those Melrose cottages to the left. But you can see how quick you can get to the beach. You just walk right across. So you can read more about Melrose Resort online, but it went bankrupt years ago and it was involved in a Ponzi scheme. So the large resort has been explored by many. You can look on YouTube and watch, uh, look at some of the inside of the buildings, the hotel rooms and things like that. But here it is on the left. And this is the large part of the hotel part. And then you can see on the right, you know, it's kind of, it has had better days. How about that? So sadly, explorers and also hurricanes in the area have damaged a lot of the resort. And um, what's kind of eerie about it is explorers were able to find hotel rooms that had beds made, and chairs and televisions, and even hotel glasses in the bathroom, just like, it was Twilight Zone and it just ended. So a new uh, buyer is in the process of purchasing the resort and the surrounding golf course. And so when you first come in, you're going to see this um, hotel on the right. And then on the left, you're going to see the clubhouse. So the clubhouse is in good condition and is used for meetings and things like that. And then the boarded up houses are part of that resort that the new buyer would, would get. At the end of Melrose, you're going to see... Um, an older restaurant building and the pool and that is also part of the Melrose Resort that is being sold. You cannot get into these areas and explore anymore. So these areas are now fenced off with cameras installed and trespass notices. When we were there we saw um, about six or seven guys with actual security uniforms on walking around and making sure the fences were good and things like that. So it's definitely not something you can explore anymore. But if you're interested, just look on YouTube. Here's the back part of the Melrose Resort, the hotel area. You can easily see this just walking on the beach, but um, a little bit of damage from uh, the hurricanes and things like that. This was a gazebo that was standing at one point in time. Here's the before. Notice this sidewalk right here, and you're going to see this in the bottom right. You can see a lot of overgrowth. A lot of these windows are broken. 
So here's what the Melrose Golf Course looked like. And this is on the left side when you first come into Melrose. Behind that second row of houses, uh, you can see the old golf course. So um, one really fun thing that we did is as we drive around our golf cart, it's great for the little kids. It's kind of like a little scavenger hunt. Be looking for these little trails that used to go to the old golf course. And so they're kind of hidden with leaf mulch and tree limbs and things like that. But it's something fun to look for. You can't really drive around on it. It's very bumpy and it's on private property, <laughs> things like that. But it's something fun to be looking for those little bitty um, trails as you drive around. So the clubhouse and pool is at the very end of all of the Melrose cottages and things like that. And that, again, is part of the, the portion that will be sold to the company that's in the process of trying to buy it. So that pool is closed. And so I know a lot of people have been confused about that because there's some Defusky websites that haven't updated and let everybody know, but this is closed. The restaurant there, which was called Bells on the Beach, is also closed. So this is closed to the public and we're hoping when the new buyer buys it, it will open all back up again. Cart safety, um, definitely look over your golf cart rules. You must be 16 years of age to drive the cart. Sometimes we've seen little bitty kids driving the cart. And over the years, um, a few younger drivers have been injured. And so you definitely want to look over those rules. The rule on the island is if you're found on the beach or with a younger driver in the seat, they have the right to take the golf cart back. They can even take the key out and and then come back and get the golf cart later so please read the rules and just know that the residents are definitely looking out for everyone's safety and i know there's been a few dogs that have fell off carts and been seriously injured too so if you're going to ride around with your dog please make sure it's secured cars you're going to see um, families really driving around in golf carts that is the main transportation method. You will see a few cars and those are usually residents or businesses like pest control, heating and cleaning services. But most of the cars are going to be golf carts. Hag Point. This is the section of the island that's for Hag Point residents only and their guests and it is gated with security. You pay an initiation fee, you have like a yearly membership fee, you get access to the horses there, the clubhouse, golf course, they have restaurants, um, multiple pools and things like that. Great thing about that membership is it gives you 24 hours a day water taxi service too. Bloody Point is a, this is this three story condo I told you about that does have a pool. That pool is for the guest at the condo resort area only. Um, but this is where the public beach is. It has a really great view. And then right before you get to it, you're going to see the Lighthouse Museum. And if you go behind it, you can see the Eagle's Nest and Pappy the Gator's Pond. So again, this is where the public beach is. I have on average seen three to five, fam you know, three to five families, but that's it. So it's never really crowded there. So restaurants. And again, these can change, but uh, the Fuskies has, of course, takeout pizza and a bar and grocery items. The Crab Company, super popular spot. A lot of people come over from Hilton Head on their boats. Um, they have an outdoor dining area, restrooms, playground. Of course, you can dock your boat and they have the scrap iron bar. And live music some weekends. School Grounds Coffee, they have pastries and cookies, a lot of breakfast items and coffee and frozen drinks. We really love their lemonade and their scones. And while you're there, to the left is a little basketball court too. Shops, you've got Defusky Rum Company. It's got a gift shop, specialty rum, and they also do tours. Iron Fish Gallery. This is Chase Allen's outdoor gallery. He has coastal themed sculptures that he makes and he has a Facebook page and a website. Defusky Blues. They have hand handmade textiles and um, textiles and classes. They um, show you 
how they use indigo to dye, you know, shirts and scarves. It's a really great experience. And so definitely stop by there. Um, Fusky Bikes, they have, uh, if you want to rent beach chairs, they have electric bike rentals and they have cute little pet carriers to go behind the bike if you want to uh, bring your dog with you. Tour de Fusky has kayaking trips and biking and other types of tours. So this island is full of the Gullah culture. So I'm going to leave this here and let you read. So if you want to learn more about the Gullah culture, the lady you need to meet is Sally Ann Robinson. So she is a sixth generation native. She lives on the Fusky Island and she gives tours Tuesday through Saturdays. And there's the times and there is the link. But you can also just Google Sally Ann Robinson. Um, she's just a, a wonderful lady with a great soul and she's usually at the church on Sunday morning singing just a beautiful voice but she has cookbooks she also does catered meals in addition to doing the tours so it's an authentic uh, way to visit the island and learn more about the culture. The Fusky Tours also gives tours and in addition to echo tours and things like that. So scrap iron drink, you're going to see this when you go to the crab company. So this is a cocktail, cocktail. and back in the 1950s, um, everyone was making a living from picking oysters and things like that. Well, the Savannah River was contaminated by just the industry and things like that, population. And so that's flowing on down and was hurting the oysters into Fusky. And so what does happen is the few that stayed on the island decided to make corn liquor and they would put these in canoes and they would row to Savannah and sell the alcohol. But when the officers would ask them what they had, they would say they were just carrying scrap iron over. So they would put scrap iron in the canoe over the liquor to hide it. And so that's where the, the saying scrap iron came from. So if you go, there's the, there's some scrap iron and there's what the bar looks like. Uh, the crab company and tourists love to get pictures in this iron bathtub and the reason it is there is because this is just an example of uh, this bathtub is scrap iron and so it could they could have traveled with you know pieces of bathtubs or a whole bathtub they found all sorts of creative ways to hide that corn liquor there's a community farm um, on the island and there is the link for that and you can contact them to work out a guided tour or just ask to volunteer. There is a wonderful new park that has opened up Francis Jones Community Park. It has a playground, pavilion, restrooms, and a trail and this is kind of on the back side of where the church area is bird watching. So when you're going to enter Melrose, you'll look on the right and you're going to notice a rookery and a rookery is a nesting area. And in this nookery, rookery, you're going to see heron, egrets, and wading birds. This is a protected area for those birds. So definitely stop by and listen to their calls and take pictures, but don't disturb them. It's definitely a protected area. nature the whole reason that we go there and so there's a lot of nature and there's an actual nonprofit that's helping protect the natural resources on the island if you want to look at their website or their facebook page roger he is an author of a lot of books and he is just a great resource i've asked him a million questions through facebook about the birds over near melrose and i appreciate all of his help uh, so he's a local writer and you can look him up online and purchase some of his books. He's on the southernnature.org website, but you can also Google to learn more about him. 
you are going to see these very unique squirrels. They look like lemurs. <laughs> um, my kids kept saying, there's monkeys on the island, but um, they're actual fox squirrels. And you will see a few black ones, and that's just a mutation. Like most low country areas, you're going to see snakes. And you've got garters, you know, green, rattlers, kings, uh, you know, Black racers, scarlet kings, cotton mouse, water moccasins, corn snakes, and copperheads. And also you're going to have alligators on the island. So if it's a pond, it's safe to say there's an alligator in it. So please don't wade in the pond. Let your kids play near the edge or walk any small dogs near the edge. Definitely need to be careful in all low country areas like that. Um, it's a little bit about alligators for you, um, but remember alligators can stay submerged for long periods of time and so they can be underwater for about an hour and you're not expecting it and, and then they come up. But most of them are going to soak up the sun on the banks during the day. So when you first come in to the bird rookery area of Melrose, if you look on the left, you'll see little small alligators there, usually sunbathing on the side. But a few alligators have been seen in the salt water at Bloody Point. So this is a common practice where they dip in the salt water to remove and kind of prevent parasites on their skin. They're not hanging out in the water all the time. This is just a random occurrence. But just if you see them, this is why. Museums. So you've got the Defusky Island Historical um, Organization. It was started in 2001. And if you'll see these little bricks as you first come in, so we'll talk about that in a minute, but this one room museum has, um, you know, the original land grant, an old 19th century family Bible, an organ, a stuffed alligator, coins, military buttons, Indian airheads, and a lot of the books from local authors and artist. You can buy one of the engraved bricks if you go to their website and it helps out the foundation. You can buy a brick and put your family's name on it and then look for it the next time you're there or you can donate a brick to someone. There's a cat sanctuary. Uh, you can contact them directly and have a tour or if maybe you want to bring donations over when you come. Maybe you want to bring some cat toys or cat food and things like that. I'm sure they'd appreciate it. There's trail rides. You can go along the dirt roads or around the beach. You've got biking and the uh, echo tours. Oh, here's the lighthouse. So this lighthouse doesn't look like a typical lighthouse. Of course, it's more of the keeper's house. Uh, it's similar to the one at Tybee Island. It looks very similar. But it does have this museum and you can pull around to the walk, uh, walk around So park your little golf cart in front, walk around. And um, that's when you can see the eagle's nest. There's also a lighthouse at Hag Point. Um, this 1873 is when it first started. This is not this is only open to the residents and their guests in that Hag Point develop area. But um, you can contact Hag Point and come over um, if you're interested in buying a membership. And they do have accommodations where you can stay inside the lighthouse. We have historical churches. This is the First Union African Baptist Church. It dates back to 1881. It's one of the oldest buildings on the island. And it's always unlocked. And we love to go. My husband plays the guitar, so he loves to bring his guitar and play inside of the church because of the acoustics. So if you have an instrument, you might want to bring it. Um, this is the two-room building that was used um, as the first school. And um, this is Pat Conroy's Water is Wild. Uh, Water is Wide. This is where Pat taught. This is the Silver Dew Winery. It dates back to 1883. This is where they stored oil and wicks and la uh, the lamps that were used at the lighthouse. And um, it is open from time to time and they have wine tasting out front and things like that. You're going to see a lot of Gullah homes, just the style of them and these beautiful oak trees that are usually right beside it to give shade. And so 
This is the home of Frances Jones. She was a teacher on the island from 1939 to 1969. She taught around 96 children. She was the only teacher there. This is a tabby material. You're going to see this more over in the head point area, but if you do see it, I want to let you know it's a ground oyster shells, sand and water. So it's kind of like what we would use for cement. Now they were using it to construct buildings. This is the Moses Flicking Cottage. It's right beneath a, an oak tree again for shade, but um, him and his wife, Grace, he was the undertaker and she was the midwife. And so the saying was, she brings them in and I take them out. But it is a private residence on the island. It's just beautiful. There is a few cemeteries on the island. You've got the Maryfield Cemetery. Cooper River Cemetery and Mary Dunn Cemetery. Special locations, you're going to see this council tree when you're riding around the golf cart. And this was used by the men after Sunday church services. They didn't feel like they should be standing in the church steps talking about non-church topics, like maybe oystering, crops, animals, family, or whatever. And so they would always meet under the tree. And they said that there was a reference to a sister tree that was nearby that the women met at. There is an angel tree. An angel tree is a special oak tree that reaches all the way down to the ground. And so you're going to see this over by the lighthouse at Bloody Point. Again, remember, this is definitely not like a prop for children's photos or a jungle gym. It's very fragile. An angel tree has been around 300 to 400 years, but it's a beautiful place to go check out and take pictures. But just be careful not to get on the limbs. Here is a great website I found when trying to do this um, slideshow. It has a brochure of the island and just locations of all the historical places. So it's hiltonheadisland.org. And then once you're there, you're going to hit the Defusky tab. And most of your golf cart rentals are going to have a map of the island too. So um, Hag Point, that's that area of the island for the gated members. They do have something called discovery visits. So if you're interested in learning about a place that, you know, has horses and maybe you want to buy there or you want to look into the golf plans, you can contact them and do a discovery visit and come over for a few days and they'll help you with the accommodations. So tips and hacks. You want to plan that water taxi way in advance, right? And then most of the Airbnb locations will not let you check in until 4 p.m. And this is because of COVID cleaning protocols that they have in place, which is great. The ferry is going to only operate at specific times. So a water taxi might be the best option if you need to arrive at a specific time to do a tour or things like that. Now, most of the Airbnbs will allow you to put your luggage on the front porch if you get there earlier, but you will not be able to go in until after 4 and many of the water taxi companies do charge a fee for bikes and things like that. So you do need to check. Um, Bull River does not, but some of the others do. Bugs. <laughs> All right. So the island does have a lot of marsh areas, so there's going to be mosquitoes and no seams. But it's fine if you just have a bug spray or bug lotion. So we found that this Ultra Thon was really great. So it's a lotion, lasts 12 hours. You can get it at Walmart.com. The Fusky store sells the Fusky survival spray. We were happy with that too. The Fusky soap company. Um, this is from their website. It says, welcome campers. Enjoy the outdoors with bug repelling and soothing blend. All these different essential oils that they are using. So you can get the soap or this lotion that works really great. And if I have missed your new business, please email me. I'd love to add you to the slideshow. Um, I want to also make a note that the date and times of businesses, um, they're going to vary. So don't rely on my slideshow. Definitely look yourself and search out the business and contact them. So Tavusky has a Facebook page. 
but the Facebook page has 9,000 members and there's only 400 something residents. And so the Facebook page was really set up so that people could post, um, you know, I found a wallet on this road. It must've fell off of someone's golf cart. Um, here's a picture of this, or, Hey, there's an animal hurt on this road. It was used more for residents. But now it's more bombarded by these different types of posts. Like I'm going to be visiting for the first time or we're coming in a few weeks. Where are this woman pulls off at? Um, what restaurants do we need to go to? Those kind of posts are really taking over the page now. And we're not really able to see the local events or the images of the island. And so I was hoping that this slideshow would help new visitors just be aware of that. Um, all of the rental companies, and I have checked, all rental companies provide an information page. They either, either have it on their website or they send it out in an email. And so they have let everyone know that you must come over on a boat and that you'll need a golf cart and just kind of the basics and like that. Now, what I would suggest is go to the Facebook page for Defusky, but use the search engine. Facebook is so great with that. There's a little bar up in the top right hand corner and you can put in, you know, keywords, vacation, sunscreen, tour or whatever, and it will search for you. But before you go ahead and put that post on there, hey, I'm going to Defusky next week. I need information. Look at past posts. Um, this morning, I checked it just to kind of give a comparison for this slideshow, and they were six posts that were the same type of post. So if you'll just check, you'll find the answer. And the poor residents are trying to help everyone. And, you know, we're very appreciative to that. But um, definitely just take the time and search on the Facebook page before making that post. Common questions. These are true common questions that I've got. <laughs> um, does Defusky have a school? Yes, it does. It has an elementary school and the middle and high school students take the Hag Point Ferry to Hilton Head and then the county bus picks them up and takes them to the school. Is camping and RVing allowed? <clears throat> it is not allowed on the island. And if you could imagine, if you were bringing an RV over, you'd have to come over on the barge and that'd be very expensive. Can I bring my car? You can bring your car, but most people do not. So you're just going to see a handful of cars on the island. I want to live on the island. Is it expensive? Of course it's expensive. Living on any island would be. But imagine having to pay to bring all of your items over on a barge. But also the residents I've spoken to have told me there's a long waiting list um, for new homes to be built and also for home improvements because there's not a lot of options for builders and contractors. Here is the link from the county website regarding zoning requirements. Those are very specific too. Can I let my dog run free on the island? This is a true question that I received. Um, of course, there is leash laws. So no, you can't just let your dog run free. And the little kids on the island, everyone's, you know, families and trying to enjoy the beach. They don't really want your dog running right through their, their picnic or whatever. So you do need to look into making sure your dog's on a leash or on like a positive voice command but a lot of the rentals uh, do allow pets and some don't and they have cameras on the porches to make sure that when you're checking in you don't have a dog so make sure that you've checked with that and this is from the like the the county beach website it says that animals are permitted on the beach april 1st through september 30th before 10 and after 5. What happens in an emergency? So there's no dog, uh, doctor or a clinic on the island. So in an emergency, you need to call 911, but you do need to know the address for your rental. There's two full-time EMTs at the fire station at all times. So, but if it's a serious emergency, um, they said they would transport the person by helicopter to the mainland. Can I go just for the day? Yes, you can. You can go for a few hours or all day long. So just check with the various companies about renting a golf cart or how you want to, you know, maybe you want to bike on the island. So it's similar to Cumberland Island where you can go over by boat and you can walk around or bike. You just have the added op option of having a golf cart. Um, 
do they have live cams? They do. Hague Point has two to three live cams. Um, there's only two that's currently up right now, but there's the link for you. And it's great to look at those cams. You can kind of see how the weather is and things like that. How did deer get to the island? This is a common question for my students. So the, um, a lot of people don't know that deer can swim. So they are swimming more than a mile across the Cooper River to get to the island. Now you will notice that a lot of the deer on the island are a lot skinnier and smaller compared to mainland deer. So I hope you enjoyed this slideshow. I really appreciate you taking the time to look through all of it. It is a truly magical place to relax and explore nature. So I want to recommend it for all families, but I do think that it helps to kind of know a little bit more about the island's history and what is available. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks again.